Gary is a lusty symbol of American enterprise. A city born to work. A working man's city. Child of this century. The story of Gary's growing to be an industrial giant in the space of just 50 years is a classic story of American vision, enterprise, and industry. Because of the decline of the steel industry, people lost thousands of jobs. The steel mill went from employing 25,000 people here in the city of Gary to employing less than 5,000 people. As a consequence, there were more abandoned homes, there was more crime, there was more poverty, and that still exists today. Forbes magazine concluded that we are one of the most miserable cities in the United States. Our jobless rate is more like 30 to 40 percent. We must create jobs here in the city of Gary. Just two, are both, are both here. Newly elected mayor, Karen Freeman Wilson, has put together a team to try and restore her city's hope and recapture its dreams. Well, when I look at the current state of Gary and the current state of affairs, um, and if I were to give you an overview, I would have to start with the budget. Uh, we have a budget deficit and quite frankly, um, against a budget that has already been reduced significantly, so there really isn't a lot that we can cut. 60 people at an average of 30,000 per person without benefits, that's 1.8 million. Right. Uh, and if you add benefits, that takes us to the If you worst. struggle, yeah. you end up having to let go 72 people. When I thought about my senior staff, I thought about people who had expertise in the areas that we needed um, expert advice in. You want to make sure that we're dealing with the structural issues within the department. Because if we're I thought about people who had either the same love or a similar love for the city of Gary. And I thought about people who were willing to make a short-term sacrifice understanding that uh, not only would it pay off to the city in the long term, but it would pay off to them personally in the long term as well. This city is on life support and things are, <clears throat> things are bad. That we could not get any money. We went from an $84 million budget just a few years ago to a $47 million budget. That's unbelievable. To be able to maintain city services at a 50% cut, I have city employees that I'm struggling to pay their salary. Nobody wants to cut police. That said, though, we're going to have to do something, and y'all know that, because you guys, not just police, but police and fire, making up 80% of the budget. I mean, we're really at that point now where we're, we're taking a very calculated but a, a major risk. In most cities, a substantial portion of the money that's actually spent is not discretionary. There are things that just have to happen. But in this city, we are broke. Here at Gary, where we are focused on managing cash every single day. If I pull half of the people out of the detective division, then that means that the one or two detectives I leave in burglary, they will probably have a caseload of about 2,000. Right. And people would complain about not getting phone calls, follow-ups. Same way with robberies, that would, uh, citizens would suffer because the de we wouldn't have enough detectives to service the people. Mm -hmm. To have an increase in gunshots and to even think about possibly having to cut public safety, no way, we can't do it. We need money. To revive her city's financial health, the mayor has launched an economic recovery plan. If passed by the Indiana State Legislature, the draft, known as Senate Bill 585, will bring new jobs, but more critically, broader state support for her city. 
And our mayor, Karen Freeman Wilson, came down. We met with uh, Senator Kenley and Chabano and others, and she shared with them this booklet entitled, A New Day, The Rebirth of Gary. And that's what this legislation helps us to do, is to continue what we feel the rebirth of Gary. Our chance for sustainable recovery in the city of Gary really comes from our ability to bring new jobs through new businesses and through the expansion of existing businesses. I've been here 30 years and I don't think I've, I've seen where the city of Gary has come to the legislature with a list of things to say, here's what we need, this is how you can help us. Part of the economic development plan is the expansion of the port. Well, you're connecting that port to rail services, to truck right. services. They're expanding the runway and the airport. That's, that's right. So yeah. any, you know, it's kind of a hub for all transportation services. If Senate 585 bill does not pass, 8 to 12 percent of people that we're going to have to cut. Now, the city has already cut about 25 percent of its workforce. Thank, Thank you, you for being done. here. Thank you had you good meetings us. today. The I had great meetings, great meetings. We had, uh, goodness, we were spent about an hour, hour and a half with governor's folks, so. Good. Good. Fantastic. Yeah. I consider Senate Bill 585 pivotal for us, not just because of the economic development opportunities that it presents, but also because it's an opportunity for us to reestablish the credibility of this city, to get a seat at our own table. There is a sense of paternalism uh, for people who want to support Gary in their efforts to come back. And so uh, very often you see uh, people determine policies or suggest policies in the city of Gary that they don't suggest in other cities. There's absolutely an elephant in the room in the city of Gary. It is the issue of race, and certainly uh, there are people who moved a away from Gary because of the um, elevation of African American leadership here in the city of Gary, and their thoughts and their perspective that that was inferior, that, uh, that African Americans were not Pos uh, positioned and equipped to lead. They didn't have leadership skills. What's happening, man? How you doing? Hey, baby. All right. How are you? Good. Good to see you. Yeah, this is a good thing. You're doing a good thing. Hey, give him back. That's right. Give him back. How much are you going to let him cut off? Hey, I want to get a mohawk. Are you going to get a mohawk? Wow. That's the problem. Hey, what's going on? How are you doing, brother? All right, appreciate it. Hey, young man, you're going to be so handsome in school. Looking good. What's your name? Say it again. Gerard. All right. Mayor is not only is she a homegrown product, born here, raised here, went to high school here, and was successful um, going to Harvard undergrad and Harvard Law School and had the opportunity to serve at the state level as the attorney general. And often when you serve at that level, people don't go back to their hometown and also choose to serve. She's come back and it's a real testament to her commitment to helping this city turn around. The fact that Gary has a rich history of economic success, that is on our side. And so even though we have an uphill battle, we also know that we have a legacy of achievement that we can build upon and that we can look to as we climb a steep mountain towards uh, bringing Gary back. Mile after mile along the lakefront, you see the muscles of an expanding America, the new industrial heart of the free world. And its center is Gary. In the late 60s and early 70s, Gary had twice the population that it has now. It was flourishing. The streets were lined with stores. And in addition to that, my parents were able to make an honest living. In fact, my father was a steel worker. My mother worked in the social services agency. 
And not only were they doing well, but similarly situated families throughout the city were doing well. Gary had one of the most renowned school systems in the country because the steel mills were flourishing at that time. My fight was trying to get uh, equal voting rights and equal pay and going to a school that everybody else was going to. But this is your fight. You guys are going to have to take up this fight to try to end some of the gun violence that's in your neighborhoods, in your schools, and it's taking you guys out in big numbers. Who has been touched by gun violence? Actually, my cousin Jamari, he was only 14 when he got killed, like two years ago. He was a freshman. Last year, my uh, brother Braylon got killed. My uncle, he got shot and killed at uh, the liquor store, the discount liquor store on Clark Road. Yeah. My uncle, he got shot and killed right in front of me. And then my cousin who went here last year, Edwin Deloney, the football player, he got shot and killed walking home from football practice. At some point, this has to stop. Though I do live in a rough neighborhood, I don't allow that to take away from the fact that I still have the right to dream. I think if Dr. King was alive today, he would be focusing on getting people to realize we have not achieved the dream that he stated in 1963. Dr. King would let us know that we are really oppressing ourselves and that we are doing things to damage ourselves. And it, it kind of irritates you when you sit back and you hear everyone talk about what needs to be done or what should be done. But when it comes down to it, the only thing that's going to change everything is action. Family and friends are mourning a Gary man who was shot and killed outside the restaurant where he worked. Three men were found shot to death early this morning in Gary, Indiana, just before 2 a.m. Shooting the death of an East Chicago man whose body was found in his SUV early Saturday morning. Lake County Coroner's Office says 24-year-old today. In District C, Corporal Patrick. I'm just going to say be careful out there. The last two homicides have been right here in Glen Park, and the uh, night before last we had one right here. So we went almost. A lot of the criminal activity is fueled down. by lack of uh, economic opportunities. When the steel mills left, a lot of jobs left. When the jobs left, then crime went up. And I think under this mayor, she's going to attract businesses back to Gary. And one of the things we have to do to attract businesses is to reduce this crime rate to make it more attractive to make businesses want to locate here. Uh, we had a homicide at 45th and Harrison the other night. I think that was Wednesday night, about 2.49. Currently not a lot of leads on Here in Gary, the demographics of crime is the 85 percent of the victims and 85 percent of the offenders are African Americans. And in many cases, they knew each other. They were acquaintances. These were not strangers. And this is a part of the problem with black on black crime. We have not learned how to resolve conflicts without resorting to violence. Peace! Peace in Gary! What do we want? When do we want it? Now! What do we want? Peace! When do we want it? Now! You can fight peacefully and you can fight nonviolently and you can achieve that you wanted to achieve. Just like Dr. King and the civil rights workers then, we can see a change. Go, 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 Gary! Go, 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 Gary! Go, 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 Gary! Go, 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 Gary! We can stop the violence! 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 We have to give it up again for David King, for his vision, for his leadership, and like all of the young people who are lined up, with them taking our places, that our city will be in good hands. Won't it be? Yes! I've come here because of what Dr. King called the fierce urgency of now. We have come here from our different communities, our different schools and environments, all bearing one thought in mind, and that is enough is enough. Today we must stand together and realize that our current condition is our fault. 
every single one of us, but our future is our choice. And if we fail to act today, if we fail to respond to the call of urgency, if this all ends and tomorrow we go back to business as usual in the words of Dr. King, the growth of this situation and the blood spilled from here on out will be on our hands. In Gary, we're extremely concerned about the incidence of violent crime in our city, but we also understand the importance of the community coming together. What this really represents to us, other than the specifics of the bill, is a signal from the State House that the economics and the economic achievement in Gary, Indiana matters to the rest of the state. It's been five months since the bill was first introduced, and now we're at the end of the legislative session, and we only have one more day to get it done. If we don't get it done tomorrow, we'll have to wait until the 2014 legislative session. Having said that, if the bill passed out of the Senate is not exactly the same as the bill that was passed out of the House, both the Senate and the House have to come together and figure out how to uh, bridge those differences. So we can't go home with just the airport. If that's the question, we're, we, we, we we'll take that. nothing. We'll take yeah. nothing. There. I think that's our position. We get that whole package. We have 24 hours to get this bill passed. I have no clue what is happening right now. This bill has changed in form and in support probably five times today. So at this point, I don't know who's for and who's against. Let me see if we can get everybody on the same page. But we'll stay out of the battle, out of the fight. We're hoping to be able to get all parties to go back to the original intent. There's a tax provision that really is the source and the origin of conflict right now. Nobody wants to see this thing go down. Can there be some additional discussion about this? They have to decide what they're going to do. I mean, it's We're still concerned about whether the bill will pass or not because there are two uh, equally formidable competing factions who want their version of the bill to pass. That's it. <laughs> Mr. Miller. Can you please yeah. stop yeah. stirring up problems? <laughs> right. No, uh, don't smile and keep going, Andy. We're serious. Yeah. I mean, this is serious for us, and what your mayor is doing is wrong. If he was down here, I would kick him in his ass, okay? He needs to stay out of this, Andy. All right, thank you. He needs you. to stay out of it. Thank you. And I'm sick of him. You got to take everything he says with a box of salt, not a grain of salt. At the end of the day, um, the most frustrating thing about this is that these little petty battles will impact immediately the people in our city. It pains me to say I'd rather get something than go home with nothing. Um, but, you know, I can see that there's an opportunity here to get so much more for the citizens. And I don't know if we're going to be able to do it. I, at this point, I don't think so. If anything positive, call me. If not, I don't need to hear anything more negative tonight. Okay, we're ready now to return to our calendar and let's go back to those concurrences eligible for action. Gary has many assets. This bill would aid and assist us in terms of our rebirth and moving forward. So I would ask the members of the Senate vote uh, unanimously for the concurrence on Senate Bill 585. Thank you. I too rise in support of this piece of legislation. This legislation proves true to the potential. You're talking about 6,000 plus jobs, which means additional money going through, circulating through the economy, the area, and tax dollars coming to the state. So I urge your support thereof. Thank you. Thank you, Senator Randolph. A uh, motion is placed on its passage. The machine is open.
Senator Snyder. <laughs> the machine is closed. 50 ayes, no nays. The motion to concur has passed. 50 to nothing for early. <laughs> I'm glad he said it was you who wanted to give me a hug and not him. We <laughs> know you said no way. We are extremely pleased to have Governor Mike Pence here today because he is here to conduct a ceremonial signing of Senate Bill 585. <laughs> Good to see you. See you too. Am I in the right place? You're in the right place? Good. At the right time. <laughs> so much appreciated. Charlie Holmes. You know this guy? Sure. <laughs> I scarcely believe we would have arrived at this day uh, without the capable uh, and honest and effective leadership of Mayor Karen Freeman Wilson. And I'm personally. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Mayor. Thank you. Governor. Thanks, everybody. Good to be with you. If King were alive today, I think he would continue to be focused on issues of poverty. Today, part of civil rights is about dealing with the issues of poverty and inequity in our municipalities. I really believe when we turn around these cities, particularly some of these industrial cities in the Midwest, whether it's Detroit, whether it's Gary, whether it's St. Louis. Well, hi, how are you? Do you have a hard place for me? Of course I have a place for you. These are cities where our middle class has been born. And when we get these cities back is when the American dream will be real for a much greater portion of the American population than it is today. If Dr. King were alive today, he would continue his efforts relative to economic equality. Because he began to understand later in his life the relationship between economic achievement and racial equality. This is about building the city, one step at a time, one sewer at a time, one street at a time. It is every bit as important as a ground that we break or anything that we do. On the count of three. One, two, three. All right. Pretty good. When I connect her and Dr. King is this whole notion of dreaming for other people. That's what I think that the mayor really is doing. She is dreaming for the city. No, we are not satisfied. And we will not be satisfied until justice rolls down like water and righteousness like a mighty stream. This will be the day when all of God's children will be able to sing with a new meaning. My country, tis a thee, sweet land of liberty of thee I sing. I have a dream. I have a dream. Four little children, they live in a nation where they will not be judged by the color of their skin, but by the content of their character. I have a dream today. and mountains shall be made low, the rough places will be made plain, and the crooked places will be made straight, and the glory of the Lord shall be revealed, and all flesh shall see it together. This is our hold to join hands and sing in the words of the old Negro spiritual, free at last, free at last, free at last, free at last. Thanks, God Thanks God Almighty. Almighty. we are free at last.